Hello guys, so just entered a um, Liches Arena uh, and um, I have attempted recording one yesterday and it went absolutely um, not good. Um, I find it very difficult to um, uh, to commentate on Blitz and play it at a reasonable standard at the same time. Um, so uh, it is a little bit of a silly attempt to do it again, but uh, I wanted to make it an instructive um, video in the sense that um, I would like to give you a bit of an idea about how in my opinion Blitz should be played not so much in terms of how well I play as opposed to others because I certainly don't but more importantly to uh, model the purpose of Blitz play which in my opinion there are two reasons why one should play Blitz ever and if you are playing Blitz for a third reason then you are doing it wrong number one to practice your openings this is the utmost number one best reason to ever touch a chess piece in a blitz setup number two um, that you want to have fun um, and that's it and I know that the second one sounds stupid but if you have got any goals of yeah I want to get better at chess and uh, yeah I want to do this and I want to do that so I'm playing blitz you are deluding yourself so Playing Blitz is not going to impact your chess skill set in any way, shape or form. If you are prone to time troubles, you're not going to get less time troubling at all, ever. Matter of fact, the opposite is the case. Uh, in history of chess, we know about uh, really a lot of absolutely breathtakingly awesome Blitz players who were notorious time troublers throughout their whole entire career. So the two are not in any way, shape or form uh, in correlation with one another. You see five pending. I'm a bit nervous about this night now. Yeah, let's slide over here. Um, so yes, don't ever believe that uh, if you are, for example, struggling with lots of time troubles in your life, why am I playing absolute garbage chess? then uh, it is going to help you because it's not. Well, I managed to get outplayed in about, what, 10 moves um, because of um, my inability to speak and play at the same time. But that's all G. All right, um, and now I've got half the time that he does, not even at that. So we are going to start on a solid defeat. So yes, uh, ooh, bishop in. Okay. Um, yeah, and so what I usually tell my students about Blitz is that the best way to play it, and it kind of sucks, because your opponents are not going to like you for this, but the best way, in my opinion, to approach this whole issue, um, if we can call it that, is that you play a game, where you actually try to do your very best, especially in terms of your openings, right? And when the game is over, the first thing you do is that you look up your openings and see where things went out of hand. And for me, for to deliver a point on this meta, well, I can't do that now because I'm extremely short on time, but. Uh, I would like to have a look at uh, what I needed to play when he did that a3 rook b1 thing to prevent uh, an early b4 that he did get to play and it did cause a fair bit of uh, headache to me. I'm totally just bluffing my way out of this game by the way like uh, I should be losing it without any dramas whatsoever. Like I haven't done a sensible move since day dot. Uh, that's another textbook case of me being stupid um, because I really didn't want to play this move because now my position just sucks so we need to hang on to this c5 square as best as we can but uh, we just got more murdered on every single part of the board yep oh wow I wanted to go here to keep that Actually, that took surprise me. Now, I may have some 
Well, I can't have, I don't have any glimmer of hope. But if I had had time, I could. Wow, that was a little juicy. Okay, so this is how you start uh, a Blitz tournament. So, now let's start it for realsies, okay? So, uh, let, let's go into some wildness. Oh, wildness it is indeed. The Albin is on the menu, ladies and gentlemen. The Albin Counter Gambit. And yeah, I meant to do some A3, B4 early on, in fact, even before this shebang takes place. But I wasn't quick enough on my feet to do that. Uh, bishop here or Queen A4? Queen A4, 95. Yeah, I think Queen A4 is annoying here because B5 is coming, right? Yeah, so now if B5, 95, Queen A7, I hope that that's good for us. Like his king is getting tickled a fair bit, right? Take this. Now there are some tricker, trickeries here that I move the knight, and then there is a mate threat here, which I quite like, because it's not that easy to stop. And this bishop is quite frustrating. Um, I'm four, oh no, knight d4 is awesome because after queen d4, bishop b7, check king here, I pick off the queen, so I like this a lot. This is good. This is good. Eat big keys, otherwise, you will never get uh, unhealthy and. Uh, Obese. But I feel like I am entitled to it because uh, I already had my uh, tennis match today. How about if I get a microphone in my face so that you can hear me? Sounds like a plan, right? Mm, check. Let's go check again. That will make him resign. GG! GG, brah! Alright, so now I would again look up the opening that I played and I remember that instead of G3 it was A3 earlier on but I didn't want to embarrass myself by playing the only exception opening in my life where putting out the dog ears is actually the right call. So going back to the first game, I would have a look at that uh, early c4 shebang because a3 didn't look like a right move at all there. And uh, now we are just going to berserk our way through this until uh, we get to back to the top of the pack, if I can ever achieve that. Okay, that's a very... I don't need to worry about looking this one up. the don't do this opening is what it's called I mean I could take this now already but do I want to I could also castle here okay let's play some fun chess G5. Okay, this is looking a lot like not fun. That was a really bad move. Now this bishop is a very sad customer. Knight e4, f4. Now he wants to take this, I have a feeling. Could take an e4, right? Can I actually do that? Because I really don't want to allow this. I'm also somewhat inclined to do this take, 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 and then come up here. Is that doable? Oh, wow, I've got 36 seconds on the clock. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm really not uh, mentally ready for this. It's a bit speculative, but uh, the queen finds it difficult to come into the defense on any of these squares. And this is quite quick. 
Yeah, there you go. Once you have to play d4 now, perhaps? To open up the bishop. Oh, then I have rook check, and if bishop takes, pawn takes. All right, he just gave away the game now. GG. Queen g3. I will take that, thank you. I will take that. And I'll play bishop d6 with the idea of e4 next. I didn't want to start with e4 because then they would have had bishop f4. Why do I have a feeling that my camera is actually aimed at the sky? That looks a bit better, right? Just a bit, yeah. Okay. He seems to be quite keen on uh, flagging me. Mm, can't blame the dude. Oh, okay. He's donating a fair bit. Oh, generous. Move the rook up this way and then it's mate. Ha! <laughs> Told you. All right. Okay, we're making our way back. There are a fair few undefeated people up in the top. Where did my T go? Okay, that sucks. All right. We're not going to berserk this one. So let's practice the Nimzo. Let's not practice the Nimzo. Let's practice the lame opening instead. I mean, this is obviously a problem with uh, playing Blitz, but this is the benefit of playing Blitz, that when you want to practice your openings, you don't actually get to uh, practice your openings because people, especially on lower level, play uh, every single nonsense opening you can name under the sun rather than proper stuff. So it's actually difficult to practice your opening variations sometimes but then again that's the benefit of blitz because I just play one and if that's not proper opening then the next one will be and actually you need to practice this too because this is what you will meet a lot um, looks like a blunder takes 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 knight takes and uh, yeah it's not good for them is a polite way to put it I guess Queen g3 is something I missed a little bit when my queen is pinned. I also missed this. Um, but not really. Because this is hanging with check. So I can do a lot of things here. Now queen e4 seems to be forced. When I take, and he can't take this because of the check. Yeah. So this is game. Um, and this is why, in my opinion, you should never ever play uh, crazy openings like, oh, I play Stonewall reverse color and then I have a tempo up Stonewall. Yep, awesome. So what that means is that you are now playing a garbage opening with an extra tempo. Yeehaw. Uh, so now if I take, you may have knight f3. And although I don't believe in that, I'm looking for the cleanest win. I could just castle allowing them to take and then knight c6 and retake the pawn. Or I could go d3. Hmm. Choices. Too many choices, man. Yeah, let's just go. I'm too lazy. Let's just get out of here and then... Just do caveman. I'm seven pawns up. I just trade everything off and we should be all good. And I'm guessing I'm not, I wasn't even playing this well. This early 90s so it felt a little bit dodgy. I mean, this is something I like to do in this setup and then eventually kick the knight up with f6 and play for e5 just to prove them wrong. Because the old setup is designed to shut down the uh oh, let's go the uh e five square okay, let's put this in the center a little bit looking that way, a little bit looking that way, and then look up look across is the plan, 
Yeah, I can't be bothered picking pawns like that. That's against my beliefs in chess, although objectively is a good move, but uh, my belief is that when ahead, the best move is the move that is the most likely to make them resign. So my objective when ahead is to force resignation the soonest, fastest way possible. And rook doubling on the E has served that purpose much more so than taking that pawn. This way I put pressure on to the degree that he plundered a piece at the first given time. In fact, yeah. Um, however, I was wrong about the fact that I thought uh, that would trigger resignation. Now I'm going to take it because I will take this one too. I didn't think that Mr. Sheshukov would play on with uh, 16 pawns down. And two pieces, one, but whatever. All right. We did it. We did it. So what was that opening? That was a, a Queen's Pawn opening. So again, I, if I was my own student, I would now look up that position where I played at early knight d7, which was a little bit sus. And I would check if uh, perhaps it would have been better to fianca or the other bishop first to b7, play castles e6, and then go into that shebang that I went into. What? Okay. Actually, you could take this now. All I have got to say about this is... Wow. Now, I could play e5, bishop back 90 to c5, c3, but it's not my interest to um, make the position clocked up. I want to open it up. Now he wants to play for bishop a6, but this is just shocking. Like, he is on the verge of defeat already. Because you can't play chess like this. So I'm fully developed, and he has got a bishop out and played 65,000 uh, pawn moves in a row. And uh, I may have needed to take this first, though. Was I a doofus? So take, take, 95. Yeah, that <laughs> that was the way to go. So whilst uh, I'm explaining to you how terrible chess players they are, I managed to get myself in a clearly worse position. Oh, check and wins the pawn. Nice. Okay. I slightly missed that, but he seems to be very intent on making only pawn moves, which is all cool and fine by me. And then um, putting pieces on miserably bad squares. As a result of which he's still dead, which is quite miraculous given how spectacularly I stuffed this up because of uh, me playing too fast. So the right way to punish it would have been to take first and then knight e5. I believe. Oh, ooh, 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 ooh. I nearly pressed. Actually, I did play, press the resign button there for a second. Now, under normal circumstances, I would take this and tell them that you are bluffing. But since this pawn push is not threatened because this hangs, and I have got a very powerful attack here against his abandoned king, I'm giving this a red hot miss. Okay, so now if I go there. Yeah, no. Nah. I'm not willing to make moves on the side where he's coming at me. Having said that, now after a4, a3, knight back, I will take b5. Because then there is a full blockade. Now he's already dying to various things if he allows me to take take and then rook check and knight in. So maybe he will take take and then knight back. That's actually quite sensible. But then I have either queen f3 or queen e4 bruising him big time. Okay. Maybe take would have been actually more accurate in hindsight. F6 takes, rook takes, rook h7, rook across. Yeah, good luck with that, buddy.
So my plan is now that if he goes there, I go here. If he goes there, I will actually take b5 and I'm threatening to trap the knight on b4. I mean, this is a textbook case of him thinking he was attacking me. Um, where the reality is that he wasn't. Okay, c4. Um, so rook f7, rook f7, rook f7, he wants queen g5, which is a little bit irritating. So now I'm going to check down this pawn. Okay, maybe this wasn't the best way to play this. Maybe I needed to play an a3 earlier on. I don't know. Um, okay. Let's just get a queen. Ooh. I nearly walked into a mate with check here and then. Oh, and the knight was pinned, you doofus. So a4 actually was a good move. Bugger. You give me them pawns, I will take them pawns. That was done by me. Mm. I can never get enough of queens. Check is very annoyingly threatened, but he cares not. I'm sure that there is a fast matey that I'm missing. Oh boy, this is embarrassing. I've got seven queens and I'm struggling with a mate. Radio. So was the E D five there the best? Because after C D ninety five, Bishop takes. Yeah, Queen E five takes back and G seven hangs and uh, yeah, he has got the back rank fest. So that's not looking good there. Jedi Obi one Kenobi. Let's play a perk. I like perk. Recently I started playing this a fair bit. I have no idea what he's doing, like that move in particular was breathtakingly weird. Okay. Alright, so let's turn it back into Sicilian. Wow. Okay. Very interesting stuff. I mean, I could play knight a5 here. And I'm quite keen to actually do that, but first I will go here because... I also want to play b5. Okay, I will take that bishop. For sure. Oh, wow. Okay, so take, take bishop here, c4. Is it what he wants? Okay, I'm up for that. Did I miss b4? Won't matter anymore. Now b4 is interesting here because knight c2 is not possible. Knight b1. I don't know. I really want to play a quick e6 here though. I want to break him here. Because I want to open up everything for my bishops. Matter of fact, now I would like to play b4 knight back in. Uh, yeah, okay. So that's just a blunder, right? So I will take this. And then we come back and he still can't take... I mean, he can take that, but uh, I will pick off this, which is uh, far larger value. 
He's gonna play knight e3. Then I drop back. Oh, okay. That was a pleasant news because now knight e3 loses to bishop f3, knight e4. Okay, let's create some fake threats. Like that's annoying a little bit. Get out of there. Now bishop h4 loses to bishop takes. So there you go. The activated piece is already paying off a little bit. Do I go knight a5 back and then jump into b? Nah, this looks lame. Let's go just develop. Through king, I will go queen e6. Yeah. And now again, he's sitting in this, which is definitely a little bit awkward. Do I have 94 now? Yeah, he just blundered the board away. Because knight takes pawn takes actually wins a piece. Unless he has got queen c2. In which case I will go bugger. But after takes takes, this is hanging too, right? So he needs to go rook b8 first. At which point I will pull the rook back. Thus killing this threat. If he goes queen c2 first, I can just... Uh... Oh no, I can't. Bugger. I wanted to take this, but then he takes here. And this hangs. Although then I have a check, so it's still to be investigated. Oh yes. King takes... Oh, I don't have bishop d4 check though, because the queen is there. So hang on. Takes here. Check king takes. Hmm. That's a bit unfriendly. Okay. Let's go here then. But I feel I missed the tactical trick here of some sort. Whoa, I nearly came back here. That would be bad. No, it wouldn't. It's all good. Because takes takes is good and takes takes and I can just take back here and that's good too. But yeah, this is this is getting... Oh, now I can take like this. That was terrible by them. I, this got a lot more uh, complicated than it should have been. Um, GG. Okay, there was nothing to look up here opening-wise. So I'm killing my main point with this. Absolutely butchering it. But so far I played zero games where opening theory played a role. So now we are playing apparently just for fun. Which I'm totally cool with. And I don't really like to play 3-0 by the way, so just to avoid getting constantly upset by yourself and uh, unnecessary and unwanted defeats, I really think that playing with uh, some sort of small increment is uh, better. Okay, wow, the guy just... Like, he's online. And he already quit this game? That's dirty. Okay, do I get score for that or points? Oh, apparently I do. But that's just silly. Like, I don't like this. If you don't want to play a game, why are you entering the comp? Weird. We're going to play against Ryoka. Oh, no. Ryoka is currently in a game. As is Kuntsmanov. As is... Zurayus is our next. Okay, let's see. Let's see if we get a proper opening out of this. Whoa! Let's practice Nimzo. Yeehaw! Nimzo. Knight of free. Okay. Instantly played uh, a wrong move order there because this is not the line I play against G3. So now we already learned the quick lesson. Now I could get cute here with uh, B5. Do I want to do that though? Hmm. I guess not. Okay. We'll turn it into a... Uh... No, we're not. I was about to say that we'll turn it into some sort of Benoni structure, but uh, 
I changed my mind about that. Now I could go queen a5, bishop d2 here. And then, yeah, but uh, it feels like I'm developing all these pieces. So I want to get one tempo myself. Because now I'm threatening with uh, things like knight takes g3. And if he plays knight here, then I have knight c3, knight f5, knight e2 check. And that was handy. So that was my tempo that I wanted to earn. Now I'm going to jettison this pawn, that much is certain. So knight d7, a3, bishop back, queen takes, and then maybe bishop back or whatever. This is a given that I can't care about pawns like this. Development rules it all. Besides, taking here means that he can't develop that one then because then I get back here. That was actually a good choice by them. Now I think this is best because it defends this, attacks that. In fact, if he hadn't taken this, I would have played um, b5 myself. Can I just take this now, though? Where does the queen go back? a6? Whoa, why did I take it with the knight? Yeah, I'm a total doofus. Like, I want to pick off this bishop, right? Oh. I totally missed that. I totally missed that. L uh, that's a total fluke. I have this. And maybe he has some cute queen sex. Like queen takes, queen takes, bishop e4. Ah, no, h6 and uh, we are winning. Yeah, never mind. Now this is hanging, but uh, now I'm going to munch on some stuff. Actually, I could take this too. Queen d6, queen d6, bishop d6, knight e3, check, but then queen e... Yeah, nah, we'll just go for this, and then d5 looks healthy. Ah, stuff that, I will take this, right? Oh, no, kidding. Kidding, that was, that was just a very subtle joke. Maybe I'm forcing b4. Which I shouldn't be doing here. So that I would do if I was white here. Guy is constantly on the cheapy business. I have to give it to him that I'm, I'm missing most of them. Like that was another awkward threat to deal with. Okay, now I don't understand this because it seems to me to be a free pawn, right? Bishop b6 will come back and defend everything. And if he plays rook d1, I want to go d4. And if he takes bishop b6. And my pieces are beginning to find good squares. I like good squares. Chess is very often about finding good squares. Now e5, knight e4 is an annoying relocation of pieces so i'm going to try to deny that by coming here and if knight e4 then f5 wins for me that's a beauty yeah he's quite uh he's playing quite good moves i have to give it to this kid he's playing far better chess than an ordinary 2020 would play now that was a little bit of a doofus though Yeah, he's falling apart now. He is falling apart like the Cadbury Flakes chocolate. I think that's an Aussieism. All right, well, let's go, caveman, and just take everything. So he here is nearly mate. He wants knight c4. Okay, I have no time to ponder about life and what he wants and what I want. Okay, I want to go bishop c7 next. Okay. So now if he leaves, I have got mate.
Now if check, I go here and again mate threat is on. And mate. GG. GG. Now that was an interesting opening there, which is slightly misplayed. And the knight f3 nimzo is an interesting move order because knight f3 allows white to be extremely flexible in the nimzo. Because that allows them still to be transposed back into e3 to g3 to bishop g5. And so my response needs to be in line with uh, all of those options. I don't even know what theory. Was queen e2 theory there? I believe so. Ah, <laughs> 96 check next. <laughs> oh boy, look at that. I didn't even, like I didn't know any theory on this, but uh, that was, that was pretty cool. Oh boy, that was juicy. <laughs> oh wow. I shouldn't be laughing, but um, I have to say I like that one. I have to say I liked that one. Okay. I'm in intending to play rookie one against virtually anything. Like I can't think of a move against which rookie one is not the best response. Bishop g5, I guess. So plan rookie one, queen g7, kill, kill, kill. Actually, knight e6 is a good plan to clog up the d uh, the e file. Okay, so now we take this. Check. Uh, take that. Check here. Now we are picking this off. Hopefully we walk into mate. Good. Nice pawn mate in the end. GG. Oh wow. I expected king a4. That was very unfriendly behavior, sir. Now I have to checkmate you again. It's not very often that uh, I checkmate someone twice in the same game. Okay, let's go again. A rapid ultimo. Okay, let's try a d4 opening. Let's see how we go with that. C4, c6, Slav. Slav defense. We are cool. No. Okay, this is a weird Slav, not meant to be very good. I guess I could have taken on Queen B3, but uh, I just wanted to keep things reasonably simple. Okay, so now if I go B4, Knight B6 is a bit frustrating. E4 is logical, grabbing the center. Yeah, let's do that. You know, guys, that I'm a big aficionado of the center. Oh, he wants e5. He's very keen on the center. And I'm very keen on not giving it to him. I could have gone in too, but uh, I'm a little bit uh, reluctant to trade a lot of dudes. e5 is not playable, right? Bugger. Not again. Not again. Actually, I wonder maybe C2 is a better square to come back to to keep everything clean on these two files. Normally I would have come back to E2. But maybe this is a tad better. A tad better. Knight H5. Okay, I can come back here, I suppose. I don't want to again put the bishop on any of these squares because they are just blocking off my rooks. 
I want to make sure that I keep a close eye on all of these shebangs. On that note, C5 may be playable. I actually expected this to come. And I wonder if I should take this or not. But um, why not play some fancy endgame stuff? Now D5 is interesting because that would shred that com bone structure apart. So D5, take, 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 rook, take, rook, take, take, rook, D5, and he doesn't have check. Perfect, let's go. Absolutely perfect. Oh, a student of mine is watching me play this and he asked me what the previous opening was. That was the Latvian Gambit, I believe. And I don't think that the Latvian chess players are particularly proud of the fact that it's that opening that is named after their country. I think if they had a choice, they would virtually pick any other over that one. Okay. I could go d6 here, but um, I don't see the instant benefits of that. Could go b4 bishop here. Oh, that's a good one. Let's do that. And then bishop here. Perhaps would have been better to go b3, though. Because I don't want to put uh, these pawns on black. But um, now that that is gone, as a chance to fix. e4? I guess. Oof. Wow. That's interesting. I'm kind of tempted to just come, but uh, rookie four, rookie four would be good. But after rookie four, he's gonna go there. Let's just bring the the boss a bit closer to action. Maybe he wants knight g seven, or that, which I totally disregarded as an option. Wow. Hands up if you're playing terrible chess. Me. Um, okay, well, let's call it uh, activity now, which is a euphemism for I have got zero threats and plans. And he's killing me. Wow. Okay, we misplayed this so badly, man. It's not even funny. It's not even funny. My only hope is that I'm going to flag the kid, which is ridiculous uh, to say because uh, he has got a minute on me. A little bit more even. But... We have the psychological edge that he doesn't know that my plan is to flag him. Does he really need to know that, Mr. Obvious? Not really. I mean, I should have played 90 to 94, right? But I'm a total goose, and so I'm not playing sensible stuff. So now I'm hoping he comes in. I can take him and then f3, knight e4 or something, trying to create some white squared blockade. Knight e3 is going to hurt. Uh, that doesn't hurt as much. Now bishop takes, I have this. Ooh, baby! Oh, he has got knight e4. Bugger. Luckily, I have knight c5 check to get out of this pickle. And then take this with a tempi. He takes this. No, he doesn't. Okay. Are we winning all of a sudden? I think we are. Okay, king e3 is a bit awkward, so let's go here. Or here even, actually. Yeah, let's go here and then a5. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, this is good stuff. What? Okay. Oh, bishop e3 was legit. Bugger. What am I doing? On what? The mass leap of history, bro. Promoting tonight. Wow. That must have confused the living heck out of him. P 
poor kid, he thinks I'm the worst bad mana player in history of humankind. Oh boy. Wow. That was bad. That was really bad. Oops. <laughs> oh boy. That was an oopsie. <laughs> oh my word. I feel so guilty now. It's not even funny, man. I feel so guilty. And cheap. Oh, this is bad. E5, okay. Oh my word. What the heck was that? That was dirty. And I didn't mean to be dirty, it just turned out to be dirty. It's funny he can't take because after bishop takes f3 hangs. Mm. Check here, it's gonna hurt, bro. No? No, mate? Yeah, okay, this was really, really nasty. This was real nasty. I feel very bad now. Okay, let's try a Sicilian. Oh, and he plays a6 and I pre-move it. So the only line where you can't play d4, I made a video about this, by the way, as in, this is the only line I've left out about my Sicilian e5 shebang uh, video. Isn't this just queen d5 bishop here and he's in pain? This looks very, very provocative. Queen d5, rook he, bishop he, bishop e7. I don't know, man. Oh, he has got knight c6 and a total tool. Okay. This looks really dodgy. And then bishop b7, like, don't I have knight d5 here? Okay, let's provoke b4, and then in we go. Okay, now I can just take this if I want to. Yeah, no, I'm going. I think he's banking on this check. Well, well, well. Interesting stuff. Luckily, someone in the neighborhood is working on a chess course which is based around development and I already have a candidate for it to purchase a copy. Because this is not looking good, folks. I'm telling you that much. Queen e4, check, bishop e3, I'm threatening with bishop takes knight g5. That's so pretty. That is very pretty. And if d5, I've got check here, which is also quite pretty. Although after knight d7, bishop takes, knight takes. Oh, maybe queen c6. Yeah, he's definitely has have he definitely has his wits about him in this dire... Times bishop e7. I should really try my mighty best to prevent him from castling. And I'm not sure I can do that anymore, which means that uh, I was talking a lot of rubbish and there was not much to back it up with. B7. 
No, I would love to have Alpha Zero's brain. Okay, let's turn this into a king attack, right? I'm just gonna go gunk on him and uh, kill him here. It's knight c6, bishop g5, h6, bishop takes, pawn takes, knight takes, and then rook across mate. GG! On your bike. I think actually castles was a mistake. I think uh, knight c6 would have been far more prudent because then he keeps me guessing about when and uh, how he castles and plays a few useful developing moves in the interim. Uh, g6. Does that not lose on the spot to this? Wow, mate, like king g7 check. I'm not gonna take that. So queen check. Okay, I missed that, but I don't count that as a move. Ninety-five. Blocking the queen's path. Sweet. Maybe knight c6 is a move here. Bishop takes, 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 knight takes, queen takes, and then play it with uh, three pawns for the queen. And uh, I think I entered it a bit too fast. But because of this falls off, I think. Maybe it looks here. Yeah, no. Okay. Yeah, this should be reasonably easy to bring home, right? Especially if he plays dumb moves like that. Okay, no, you're not going anywhere with that rook now, buddy. Good luck moving now. Yeah, I thought so. So as soon as you can create gaps between the pawns, you should be A-OK -okay here. So check, awkwardly forces the king back or not, check, and now we blockade. And now the rook still can't go. So now we have time for dirties. If I get to play H4, then this mate is gonna be very, very painful. So h4, g5, I'm a bit reluctant to trade away all the pawns though. That was maybe a mistake, but uh, he played a dumb ball, so now we are good. And the bishop can come back to cover both pawns. So as a matter of fact, nothing is hanging. Yeah, gg. Gg, brah. I don't know why I'm thinking. Okay, that's unfortunate for him. And I'm just going in. Yeah, that's not hanging, bro. Shachmate! Shach mate. Shach the mat. And Gorilla Punch is our last game. Oh wow, F4. Ambitious to say the least. I like ambitious dudes. Ambitious dudes are cool. Okay, let's do some development thingy magicy. Huh. How do I want this? Well, I'm a bit. Uh, yeah, I want to hold castle for a little bit. But maybe after h3 takes, queen takes, I have to commit. Hmm. Queen one is definitely a move that I did not expect. So now if I take rook takes, no, I want to take this. Because after fe, I thought I can use some tactics here, but no, I can't. Okay. No, I know what I want to do now. Drop the bishop back here and trade it off on g6. Which is something I couldn't have done if he had played uh, h3, g4, because then f5 basically wipes me off the board. Yeah, no, that's not good, bro. 
now he's losing the plot because these are moves that I really wanted to play. Yeah, so he gave me about 70 moves here uh, that I wanted to play myself. Maybe he wants g4 now. Yeah, I would say that that's a sign that he does want g4. And I'm not sure what I want myself, to be honest. Like it's not easy to find a target here. Mm. Maybe b4 and then queen trade. These kids despise the idea of queen trade. I expect g4. No? Okay. So, um... We'll trade this off. Um, what should I do now? The real irony is that now my knight is preventing my attack on this pawn. Okay, let's get back in the white squares. I don't really have a plan, but I'm just improving my pieces. It's a bit dangerous game to play, but um, it's not easy for him to play his side without going real gunk -ho. And when he gets there, I really want to be pressing this. Also, now I may have f5 at points. What was that? Okay, that... Wow. Okay, so h6, so takes. If takes, rook can take here, that's a bit annoying because then there is a pin on me. g6 rook f5 takes queen h5 and this is hurting a bit okay let's send this guy home and then let's just go here and start hurting this dude i just want to double up yeah He's gonna take this now. Oh, the tournament is over. I wonder if we won this or not. The tournament is over. Did we win? Did we win? Is the big question. Maybe he's gonna take now. But it doesn't really matter. So yeah, uh, we played through an hourly blitz arena, we lost one, we won the rest. Um, openings wise, there was not an awful lot to take away from this, which was very disappointing. But um, like I said, it doesn't change the fact that this should be the number one reason why we ever start a blitz game. Unless you just sit down because you want to win the comp. But in my opinion, if any player is a little bit ambitious about uh, their own chess, they must... Take themselves and the game they are playing seriously enough. Okay, this check is a bit annoying, so let's block off. Uh, to um, make sure that uh, they look up openings afterwards and stuff. I'm gonna be, be the one to give the mate quite fittingly in the end. Did we win? <laughs> That's my luck. That is my luck that the dude in the end berserk the game and won it and I actually defeated him. Oh boy. Oh well, that was that. So yeah, now is the time for us to have a look at the games and go like, okay, which one was a bit problematic in terms of openings? So for your reference, I'm going to show you that in this one, in this Ocali variation, after a6, you're not meant to play d4. And the reason for that is because, uh, and this is the only thing I forgot to show you on the e5 video in the Sicilian, is because now after knight takes knight f6, knight c3, e5, 
we can't go to b5 for obvious reasons and we also can't go to knight f5 because of d5 and so when we have to come back after bishop b4 this is an amazingly good position for black so what tends to happen is that either white plays c3 or c4 now since i played d4 i just turned it into a uh a mora and actually quite curious about how i should have played this so the game went b5 i played bishop f4 the dude went bishop b7 i went a4 he took i went knight d5 queen a4 was to be favored he took i took he gave check i went bishop d2 he took i took and here apparently black is better wow so he went knight f6 i went check he here e6 castles uh bishop e7 and uh, what the heck did I come up with here? Yeah, I played rook e1. He went back to b7. Bishop back d3. And like I indicated, do you guys see the engine? No. I uh, will go back to analysis. No. Yes, you can see the engine now. Uh, knight c6 is better than castles. And after castles, queen h4, I did have some counter play, I thought, here. Yeah, so his best is d5, bishop g5, knight d7, backing up the horse. And now I have to take knight takes bishop e7, but that's not good enough. But he lost the plot with g6, and uh, he's done here. This is actually even better than what I did. Wow. Okay. In fact, bishop g5 wasn't good. Takes, takes, 95 was played. Um, knight c6. Yeah. Okay. So that was not really that great and important. Uh, the Slav I'm curious because I feel like uh, I should have had more out of this opening. Yeah, I thought Bishop F4 was best here. Or oh, take, take Bishop F4, Bishop G7, E3, castles. So H3 is apparently unnecessary here and I can go straight here. Of course, because then I go Bishop E5, right? Yeah. Or even Bishop G5. Yeah, okay, this was foolish. I wanted to keep the Bishop. Bishop d3, take, take, e6, castles, knight d7, e4 was a bit too soon, apparently. Holding the position was better. And then it fizzled into a drawish scenario when I then stuffed this up spectacularly. I thought d5 was a stroke of a genius. Not at all. All right. Well, that was it, guys, for today. I'm glad that you tuned in. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't quite win it, but... Uh, such is life um maybe next time so yeah thanks for tuning in and i will be back with more soon bye